Welcome everybody, my name is Caleb, and this video is going to be some of the most common pitfalls for beginners in C++. You definitely want to be aware of these common problems so that you don't make them. You might not even catch them until it's too late. If you're interested in this type of content, I have an upcoming C and C++ master course, so if you're interested, check out the link to get on the newsletter to be notified when that comes out. Let's start off with the most important mistake. And this is going to basically help with many of the other mistakes, and that is to compile without warnings, or to ignore compiler warnings. So if you want to see warnings, what you do is you say dash wall, or w all. So all of the warnings, and you can see now we're getting a little extra information here. This is a very simple warning, but often warnings are going to catch things that you might not notice because it doesn't cause a compiling error. These will help you spot logical errors that you're not going to notice until later down the road you're running your code and something goes wrong. These are arguably more dangerous than compiling errors because you don't catch them up front. Warnings are there for a reason. If they are saying you're doing something wrong, you're probably doing something wrong. A problem you might encounter is using an assignment inside of an if statement. So in this example here, you are assigning the value five. Fortunately, this will cause compiler warnings. So if you have your warnings enabled, you will notice this, but this is an important thing to understand. It's not a compiling error, it's just a warning. Whereas in some other languages, this is just going to fail. C++ does give you the ability to run your code with the assignment here, which is always true, while other languages may not allow you to compile. So if we went ahead and put something like this here, the first thing you will know is that it always executes and it's going to output the value five. Another problem is forgetting to initialize a variable. Other languages may give you an error saying, hey, you're trying to use an uninitialized variable. C++ on the other hand will let you do this. Consider this scenario where we have an X and then we output the value of X and then let's compile and output this and you can see the value we get is some garbage value. Now we are getting a warning, so again, just watch for the warnings. This is a fairly common mistake when you try to increment or decrement some value. You might think of an example to count down from 10, so you might say something, well, x is greater than zero, but you forgot to initialize the value of x. So down here, when you say something like x minus minus, this is going to give you a really long loop based on the value that's likely in memory there. So you can see it's starting to count down here. This is really important when you start working with classes because data members are not guaranteed to be initialized to zero. Consider the case where we have a class with a public integer age. Inside of main, what we'll do is create a person, like so, and then output the value of their age. Same exact concept here, and you can see that we don't get zero. This may be different than what you would get from other programming languages. Oftentimes, data members will be initialized to zero. Now, the easiest way to fix that is to just say, hey, this is going to default to zero. It is warning us that this is a C++ 11 extension, so you can just compile with dash dash. Standard is C++. 11 or you could use a higher value like 17 or 20. Two alternative ways of doing this is the first one being to assign a value down here just to make sure you do this. So you say p1.age is zero or some other value that'll do the trick. And there you go we got zero. Or to create a constructor so up here we can say person and age is going to have the value zero. So that's the default constructor. Now if we don't assign a value, we can expect to get the value zero still. The next potential problem is the way you create objects inside of C++. If you're coming from C Sharp or Java, you're very likely to make this mistake. As you can see in our code, when we create the person, we do not use parentheses and we do not use the new keyword. There is a common problem where someone will put parentheses here and what this does is not what you think. This is actually creating a function that returns a person. It's a concept I believe is known as the most vexing parse in C++. A lot of people do this when they want to invoke the default constructor, this here, but that's not going to work. And just so we can see when this is called, let's go ahead and say CTOR so we know when the object is being created. 
the way to invoke this is to actually leave off the parentheses as we did. And now you can see that constructor is being called right before we output the age. Now the interesting thing is if you want to actually take an argument to the constructor, such as the age, so let's say person into age, now we have the ability to pass in the age. So age is going to be age. In this scenario, you will actually use those parentheses, passing in some value, let's say 10 in this case. So when we want to invoke a custom constructor besides the default one, then you will use the parentheses. It's really not too bad. Just remember, if you're not calling a custom constructor, then don't use parentheses. Now, there is a different way of creating objects inside of C++ that'll look more similar to other languages, and that is using the new keyword. But a common mistake is using this without understanding the way it works. It's completely different because it's actually going to create that object using dynamic memory. This is going to be working with pointers inside of C++, and you are required to then delete that object manually. So let's go over an example of what that might look like, and just know that you don't have to create objects this way. There's only certain scenarios when you would do this, and we have lots of other C++ videos on this channel that talk about pointers and the use of the new keyword and all of that good stuff. So definitely check out any other videos that might help you understand this. So a common thing to do is to say new person. When you do this, you're going to get a problem. No suitable constructor exists to convert from person pointer to person. And we're getting that conversion because we're trying to store this as a person. Rather, we want to use a person pointer. And then we will change the way we access members on this person to an arrow. And that will dereference the pointer and access the data member. It can be a bit confusing, but overall, not too bad, as long as you just get used to the syntax, adding the asterisk there, and then starting to use arrows. The other thing is you'll have to use delete when you're done with the object, just to free that area of memory. In this scenario, it's probably not a huge deal because our program ends right there, but for larger programs, you'll want to delete your objects. This is a common scenario, and this should work as expected. We're going to get the value zero because we're not actually giving it an age, but we have the ability to pass in an age. So now we should get the value five. Another thing to notice when we're trying to invoke the default constructor, you actually can use empty parentheses here. So you're not creating a function or anything weird like that. That's why when this is empty, we see the value CTOR come out because we are printing it right here. So when you're using new, you can use the empty parentheses to invoke the default constructor. And this is a common setup you're going to see but they are actually still not required. So you might see this as well. So only use the new keyword when you know you need to use it. If you don't know whether or not to use it, then you need to do more research on pointers. Check out my video on finally understanding pointers in C++, and this will become easy for you. The final beginner problem that you'll likely encounter is the incorrect usage of const. Const is a keyword to make things constant, but there are a bunch of different varieties on how you can use this keyword. So much so that I decided I'm going to create a video dedicated to cons that I have planned out, and that'll be coming out here soon. So we're just going to go over some basic variations. This is a quick overview, so we're not going to go into a ton of detail, but this will get you going in the right direction. For this, I thought I would start with some code so we don't spend a lot of time typing it out. Basically what we're doing is we are creating a class that can store some data. In this case, it's the values one, two, three, four, five, and it gets stored in a vector of type int. And you'll see a bunch of const keywords floating around. The first use of const here that I wanna talk about is in relation to creating a variable that is constant. You can no longer change that value. So you cannot say value and assign it something else. So this is of type int, so you can't go ahead and say value is five. That's going to cause a problem here. Expression must be a modifiable L value. So if you see this, it's basically saying the value on the left here is not modifiable. That's the first scenario of const, and it's the most easy to understand. The other scenario you're going to encounter is for a function parameter. This will most likely be the case when you're working with references. In this case, I'm not, but we're still using const. It's basically just saying that you can't change the parameter value. So size t is a number type, so you could in theory do something like index is five, and you're going to get the same exact problem. 
if you removed this const here, well then you'll be able to assign a value there. This becomes especially important when you're working with references because passing references to functions, that function can then change that data and have side effects outside of that function. The change can be seen outside of the function. So by labeling the parameters as const, you will not be able to accidentally mess up the data and have that affect the data outside of the function. In this case, we're just working with a basic type, so it's not a huge deal. That's why we're not passing it by reference. You might be wondering why you would pass something by reference if you don't want to change it. Well, the other useful benefit of passing something by reference will be to save memory because you don't have to copy the entire thing. So for large data that you don't want modified, it's often common to label the parameter as const and take it as a reference using the ampersand. However, for small data, like a number, not really that big of a deal. I'm just labeling this const to remind me to not accidentally change that data inside of the function somewhere. There's not going to be side effects either way on the outside because we're not taking it by reference, but it can just be handy for me locally. The other const here is the return. This basically means that on the outside, we can't assign it to something that's not constant. So for example, getting rid of const here, we're going to get a problem because we're dropping that qualifier. This just protects our data so we don't accidentally change the stored data in our object. Let's say this wasn't labeled as const, and we'll also remove this const. I'll explain that one in a second. And then down here we said value is 50. And then let's go ahead and get that value again from the object. Executing this, you can see that retrieving that data inside of our object, the value is 50 because we're working with references. So if you're in the scenario where you want to return a reference to some data, but you don't want it to be changeable, that's when you would return const. So you would just label this as const, and then you would have to put const for any of the other variables down here, and you wouldn't be able to assign it a value here. That is a good summary. The last const I wanted to talk about here is actually this const defined right here. And this will basically say, hey, we're not going to change any of the internal data of this object. So you'll only be able to see this inside of methods. For example, if we went in here and said data.pushback10, trying to add some data, we're going to get a problem because we labeled this const. So if we removed const, then we would be allowed to do that. So as you can see, there are a ton of options and varieties when it comes to const. It's very overwhelming when you're first getting started. So while this isn't quite a beginner mistake because it's a little bit more advanced, the beginner mistake here is using const inappropriately. So if you're not really sure, you just gotta be really careful. And there's also a lot more varieties of const when it comes to pointers, which we didn't even get into. So if you do wanna know more about that, check out my upcoming video on const, cause that's going to give you all the juicy details. Thank you so much. Hopefully this gave you some ideas. We're going to actually do a part two of this, which are some more problems you might encounter, but probably not quite as beginner as some of these, like forgetting to initialize your variables. So stay tuned for that video as well. I'm looking forward to it. I got all this cool content coming out. I'm excited. Hopefully you are enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.